Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So, this particular lecture I will uh, demonstrate that uh, through a typical aircraft control example and tell all the associated uh, uh, I mean uh, developments around that actually. Anyway, so this is uh, this uh, this particular lecture is taken from uh, this reference which is uh, our own uh, paper uh, developed very recent I mean published very recently rather. So, let us take it take you through so that you will understand how these uh, techniques do work for a real life problem actually. So, the problem statement is something like this, uh, we, are, uh, we are dealing with an aircraft uh, autopilot development or aircraft uh, like pilot command implementation sort of thing. Pilot gives certain command and then uh, and the flight control is supposed to take that command and execute it through flight control uh, deflections and all that actually. And uh, previously we have also studied uh, flight dynamics, so you understand what is this uh, uh, I mean control surface deflections that I am talking about actually. Anyway, so this uh, pilot commands that you are assuming here is uh, primarily of uh, two modes. One is probably will give longitudinal command or it will give lateral command. There is also a, a development where you can actually give combined longitudinal and lateral command and which is typically called velocity vector role and things like that. But anyway, uh, we will just confine ourselves primarily to the, these two and then uh, in longitudinal and command, we will typically assume, uh, I mean assume that the pilot gives some sort of a normal acceleration command. That is the that is the primary thing and then associated with that he can give uh, I mean this uh, total velocity co command ca he can also give like what is the speed of the aircraft and all that. Uh, but then uh, primarily what he will bother about is that. However, while uh, while executing this we will also assure that uh, roll rate remains 0 okay, uh, as close to 0 as possible all the time and it will also lateral acceleration also become I mean remains 0 uh, I mean as, as much as possible actually. So, roll rate is 0 primarily because you are not interested in lateral uh, lateral commands and lateral acceleration is 0 because even if the dynamics are coupled and things like that it should not develop lateral acceleration because it, uh, it reduces I mean the moment you have lateral acceleration it actually introduces uh, induced drag and things like that lot of, lot of drag it will come actually so that you do not do not want to kind of uh, induce that. In the lateral mode however, we will assume that uh, pilot gives a roll rate command as well as an altitude command height command actually. But in the same um, lateral mode as well, we also have to make sure that lateral resolution remains 0. And total velocity pilot either can give uh, what he wants or we can, uh, get, we can have some default value like the, the initial velocity before starting the maneuver should remain uh, same and all that actually. So, this uh, lateral resolution command is, uh, is built in that means the lateral resolution command is 0 for both longitudinal and lateral uh, the meaning of that is we want to assure turn coordination actually. So, if you I mean no matter what uh, what mode you are executing the uh, turn coordination has to be maintained actually. Now, the objective or the goal is uh, the airplane should respond to the pilot command uh, both quickly and nicely and then what is quickly and nicely we, are, we will see that. Quickly we will uh, we understand, but uh, nicely is also uh, like we want to assure what is going on there actually. And second objective is control design should have sufficient robustness for parametric inaccuracies. Like uh, we can never predict uh, what is the total mass of the aircraft, moment of inertia, aerodynamic coefficients precisely and things like that. So, essentially even if you have some uncertainty that means that the numbers that are uh, the we are dealing with here are inaccurate, but still the control design should have sufficient robustness actually. So, essentially it is kind of a robust tracking problem. So, let us see how do we do that actually. So, this is uh, this is that uh, uh, I mean this is a uh, standard 6 top equation that we have discussed before and the I mean the so far uh, as long as we talk symbolically this is uh, this is same for any aircraft actually anyway. But we will uh, typically take you through uh, I mean the, the dynamic the, the coefficients numbers and all are typically I will take you through this uh, high performance or fighter aircraft which is uh, like F-16 aircraft, I, 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 I think everybody knows what is F-16 aircraft anyway. 
So, this F 16 aircraft uh, model, I mean this, this is very generic, this is uh, this model is uh, I mean uh, whatever equations you see in this space, we have discussed that before, we have derived that, it is same for any aircraft anyway. But the difference comes when you do, when you have this parameter the things coming into picture, the mass of the aircraft, moment of inertia of the aircraft, uh, then the aerodynamic coefficients, also the things when you do that, then it becomes different. And that part of it, uh, it has been taken from uh, this particular reference and interestingly this F 16 model. Uh, what is called as a low fidelity model, that means uh, subsonic model and things like that, it is available uh, in the open literature now, means anybody can pick it up and then uh, do some experiments and things like that actually. And also I mean remember those, uh, those are typically available for experimental purpose actually, so the, that way uh, I mean there is nothing uh, classified about uh, this particular exercise basically. Anyway, so this, uh, this uh, reference somebody can grab it and then see all the details, how these details are given. This is just given in a very compact notation sense, but each of these uh, let us say C is um, for example, C x t then it is C x of this and C x q of that and then each of that coefficient will be expanded in a polynomial way. So, every very detailed modeling has been done uh, uh, and then to a sufficient degree of accuracy and all that actually. So, that is all details can be found in uh, this particular paper. So, with this entire model being available to us, we want to experiment our, our technique uh, like you want to apply dynamic inversion followed by neural adaptive technique actually. So, how do you do that? Now, I go back to this equation and then I try to club these uh, the, the similar quantities together sort of thing. So, the dynamic level equations that you have seen before are u v w and p q r anyway. So, this, this uh, half of the equation other things are kinematic level equation. So, the, so the dynamic level equations and all I will uh, I'll club them like this. That means, x v I will define it as like u v w, x r I will define it as p q r and x a is the, the something like attitude uh, variables and all that phi theta psi and u c is the control variable which uh, typically u is not taken here because uh, u is also like a forward velocity actually. So, you define a u c which is control variable contains aerodynamic control as well as thrust control actually. Okay. So, this uh, but also remember the aerodynamic controls uh, are clubbed together primarily because they, I mean, they can be activated in a faster way. That means they are, they are primarily responsible for altering PQR dynamics, which are faster dynamics also, and they can they can be deflected in a faster man, manner as well. Actually, okay, however, the thrust control is typically a slow control variable. It's a control variable nevertheless, but still, it's a it's a slow control variable actually. So we'll not be able to treat that uh, in a same category as aerodynamic control. So that that is another thing that we should have to remember all the time. However, we are talking about the full system dynamics anyway. So this is uh, we are not linearizing anywhere and things like that. So the, the entire state vector will consist of uh, all these things. Alternatively, either we'll use U V W as state equation, or sometimes you may we may use V T dot alpha dot beta dot in terms of in, instead of U dot V dot W dot. This B T dot alpha dot beta dot equation in place of U V, I mean U dot V dot W dot if you do that, then the, that is something called uh, I mean this uh, wind frame equations and all that actually. If you use U V W, it is a body frame equation actually. So, anyway, so that is uh, interchangeably they are, these are available. So, we will be able to exploit whatever we want actually. Now, okay, uh, coming back to the problem that we, we are discussing actually, this uh, we want this. Uh, uh, like uh, total velocity v t and then uh, roll rate is actually like p and the normal acceleration n z which is defined as negative of f z by m actually. So, that is nothing but uh, 1 by m uh, f I mean 1 over m into f a z sort of thing actually. So, that way and also remember the thrust is primarily acting in the x direction. So, y and z direction there is no thrust action that is available to us that is another assumption and which is very very close to reality actually anyway. So, this is uh, so nz and ny are defined as this external force components whatever is, is coming here okay. So, that divided by mass quantity. So, the things that you see here this part only remember this is uh, these are typically 0 anyway. So, that is 0 and this is uh, this is 0. So, whatever value remains here okay with a I mean what and whatever value remains here these are the kind of uh, normal acceleration quantities and all that actually. So, negative of this quantity 1 by m f a z is typically normal acceleration and neg I mean and positive of this uh, this f a y divided by m is lateral acceleration. The primarily because the normal acceleration we want to if you give positive normal acceleration we want to visualize that the aircraft should go up actually 
whereas you remember the body frame z axis is typically downwards that is why this uh, this negative sign is, is coming here actually that way. Anyway, the objective in, in mathematical terms are something like this, uh, if the pilot gives a P star command that means the roll rate command then my, my actual P of the aircraft should, uh, should go to P star as soon as possible. NZ should go to like NZ star, if the pilot gives a normal acceleration command then NZ should go to NZ star very quickly. Similarly, NY should go to NY star uh, which is uh, typically 0, I mean no matter whether it is later or longitudinal or whatever, NY star is maintained at 0. And V t the total velocity uh, should go to some desired velocity vector which is I mean if nothing is given by the pilot default value is typically the velocity hold sort of thing that means whatever initial velocity is there you just want to maintain that basically. So, uh, so this is the this is mathematically speaking how do you put uh, your uh, objectives uh, into the uh, I mean control design part of it actually. Now, okay, now uh, once you understand these are the objectives, now how do you go ahead and, uh, and synthesize the controller basically. Okay. So, here we uh, I mean the typical uh, way of doing that uh, also remember that uh, NZ and NY will typically get uh, converted to Q the equivalent Q star and, uh, and R star and then uh, your P star is available anyway. So, P star, Q star, R star will be available. So, the, in an inner loop you will go back to that uh, this part of it uh, the P dot Q dot R dot and then control surface reflections will be computed to execute those P star, Q star, R star. But here you will not follow that approach, we will follow a little bit alternate approach actually. Okay. So, let us try to understand that approach. And later on also remember we will compare our results for with both of the approach, this approach as well as the other approach that I just discussed. That means, NZ will be converted to equivalent Q star and NY will be converted to equivalent R star uh, in, a, in an outer loop setting. Then P star, Q star, R star will be available from which we will be able to compute uh, your control surface reflections. And V t tracking to V star is a V t star is anyway independent that is primarily done through uh, this uh, thrust control mechanism. So, that is thus independent anyway. Okay. Uh, so, anyway, so coming back to this uh, let us uh, let us see how do we make sure primarily these two quantity that means NZ goes to NZ star and uh, NY goes to NY star which is 0 actually. Okay. How do you do that? Now, for doing that uh, let us define some new variables. Okay. Uh, directly we cannot do that, but uh, in, in other words somebody can think okay, let me take this as part of the y vector like desired output uh, that we discussed in the uh, in the dynamic inversion and then try to put some sort of error dynamics to that actually. But if you want to put that then uh, remember n z is a direct uh, direct function of delta e and n y is a direct function of delta r actually, I mean delta e delta r both actually. So, that way what happens is uh, like if you take uh, derivative set of n z and n y. They, bec they are functions of derivatives of controls and you do not want to solve your control variable uh, as some sort of a dynamic equation, we do not want dynamic controllers actually. So, we want to still uh, solve it as a control variable, uh, uh, I mean we want to still solve control variable as static variables only and because of that we want to avoid this direct uh, derivatives of n z and y actually. How do you do that? I mean if you if you define these variables a z and a y something like n z plus w dot and a y is something like n y minus v dot and a z star and a y star also like that. Then you can see that if you go back to this equation this is uh, this x top equation remember if the moment I take this comp this part to the left hand side and this part to the left hand side as well somehow then th whatever left out here they are simply functions of state variable they are not functions of control variable. So, even if I take derivatives of those quantities then it will uh, only control variable appear not its derivatives actually that is that is the key point to observe. So, we do that and then on the uh, in the process we also have to assume that uh, v, dot, v double dot and w double dot always uh, kind of remain 0 this is a quasi steady assumptions for v dot and w dot. So, that means uh, the, they are not really 0 in all time but uh, f, f, I mean these are these are anyways low varying quantities uh, v and w. And then if uh, v dot and w dot will be still further slow varying, if v double dot w double dot will be still uh, like uh, they will vary, but it will vary at a very slow rate. So, that uh, that we will just assume that they are uh, maintained at 0 for all time actually. Now, under those assumptions what you can see is uh, if I if I if I want to assure this anyway n z and n y should go to their corresponding desired values, but that is equivalent to assuring that this a y and uh, a z uh, go to their desired values actually. Because if I make sure that a y go to like a y star, then minus v star minus v star will cancel out here, and then you left out with uh, n y should go to n y star. That's the only way it will happen actually. 
Similarly, if AZ goes to AZ star, then the only way it should happen is NZ should go to NZ star. Okay, w dot is common to both actually. So, that is the key observation actually. Now, also remember that NZ and NY can be written as something like control a fine form and this is not a dynamic equation again because NZ, NZ is, a, is a static variable, NY is a static variable. They are just algebraic expressions actually. Okay, so, that is also that will also be uh, required. And then P dot can be written as some uh, some control defined form that way, and V T dot can also be written written in some sort of a control defined. Well, there's a small print mistake probably. This is uh, U T thrust control actually. Okay. Anyway, so uh, if you really want to write it in a wind axis framework, then you can write uh, N, N W Z is uh, something like that. So that is uh, sometimes it may be required to do that way actually. Anyway, going back to the our uh, system dynamics, uh, AZ, now with this definition of AZ, uh, AY and all that, we will be able to write AZ and AY as, as those terms that I, that I told you sometime back, this one. Only this coefficient and this term which is like Coriolis and gravity components of the system of equations, this part is Coriolis component and this is gravity component, if you remember the system of equation derivations and all. So, that part uh, will only appear here and then a z and a y will be like that. So, if you take derivatives of a z and a y that means a z dot and a y dot and all that, you carry on with the algebra and all. So, ultimately you will be able to write in a control affine form actually. That means, a z dot and a y dot will be written in some sort of a f, uh, f plus z times u c sort of thing actually, which is nice to see. So, what you what you really want let us uh, try to see the longitudinal command uh, like if the pilot gives a longitudinal command, how is that control actually getting computed in the flight control computer, I mean how are you proposing to do that actually. And in this mode you are assuming that okay let us the pilot does not give any roll rate command, so that is 0 and the normal acceleration command is anywhere there that is nj star, this is ny star is 0 and vt star can be can be there actually or if it is not there then initial velocity is the star is the is the command actually. Now, how do you do that? Uh, so, we will again now at this point of time what will what you are doing here is nz and ny star we are not interested in direct tracking ok, this one we are not interested we are interested in uh, uh, tracking this through az and ay tracking actually. So, that is that's, uh, that uh, I mean with that in mind we will propose uh, an error vector for the fast variable like this that means, uh, for fast variable I will consider as p like error uh, p hat is p minus p star, error in az is az minus az star, error in ay is a is a y minus a y star like that and slow variable sense it is v t minus v t star which is the velocity control sort of thing. So, let us see how do you do this velocity control design first, I mean uh, it's, it's, uh, uh, sorry the, the attitude control part, tracking control first and all that. So, how do you do that? Uh, you put uh, remember these are all like uh, if I take first order derivatives then it appears like p dot a z dot a y dot, p dot control appears, a z dot control appears okay, and a y dot also control appears actually. So, having that in mind I will propose this uh, first order aerodynamics where gain value is selected as a diagonal matrix sort of thing. And then I will assume, I mean I will also make sure that V t dot and plus K V t times V uh, this sorry V t hat dot plus K V t V t hat and V t is the total velocity error and all that, that also remains 0. So, ideally speaking they has to be simultaneously assured, but uh, we will have to update this, uh, this, uh, these equations and all uh, I mean the control update that is coming from these two equations in a different time scale actually that uh, that means we have to execute this aerodynamic control in a little faster uh, delta t sense and then velocity control will have to execute in a slower delta t sense similarly the gain selection sense also remember that kvt cannot be as high as that because that is also we, we have to make sure that the time constant for the velocity control is typically large actually that means gain has to be small Anyway, so this is uh, all that uh, you have to keep in mind and then try applying this this controller actually. So, that is what you are doing here I mean if you put it there and then put these variables and all that I mean whatever definition then the dot expressions you put it back remember this these dots are available p dot is also available. So, you try to put them together and then try to s solve for the aerodynamic control variable ultimately it will happen the way that way where a u and b u will be appropriately defined actually. I am not giving the entire detail because somebody can always uh, see the, the reference for detail and uh, also remember that these are like uh, we know the theory already basically. So, this is just an application problem the, that uh, one has to take care of all the details in a, in a good way basically. 
So, what you are proposing here is for every delta t time that uh, that aerodynamic control gets updated, we, have, we will update the thrust control uh, every 5 delta t times actually. So, that is that is what you are proposing. So, but nevertheless once you have this aerodynamics is again same thing you we propose then that, that uh, Vt dot is available anyway here. So, I will I will put it back there and try to solve for something like uh, like U t basically okay, that is the thrust control action. So, this uh, d v t and c v t and all that are appropriately defined for example, c v t can be defined that way basically ok right and uh, anyway. So, this is how we are uh, synthesizing the control. Now, uh, I mean uh, these two control actions are typically again I, I repeat uh, this uh, this has to be updated in a different time scale manner sort of thing to make sure that the thrust control is updated in a little slow rate and all that actually. Now, what about uh, what about lateral? I mean, lateral command sort of thing. It uh, and here one has to be slightly more careful because we are talking about a roll rate command, high altitude command, and the less lateral acceleration command is anyway zero, and total velocity command is there. So, I mean, some heat star value. But the problem here is this altitude command actually. Once you have altitude into picture. Because, because uh, if I take h dot, h dot is not typically the control will not appear actually. Because, and if I take h double dot, the I mean then things may be different, but we want to kind of uh, avoid that h double. I mean even if I take h double dot, only q will appear by the way. So, if I take h triple dot, probably control will appear, but we would uh, we want to avoid those the complexities of third order dynamics and things like that. So, what you are proposing here is to is take you through this uh, this command transfer loops uh, in a standard way basically. So, what you are doing here the altitude command uh, once I know I will come I will compute an equivalent uh, pitch angle command theta star command and that is uh, done by enforcing this first order aerodynamics of altitude. So, I will I will make sure that uh, h minus h star is my error uh, that by definition and make sure that uh, this uh, error equation is satisfied and then put it back uh, that h, h dot minus h star dot all sort of thing. Now, h dot if you see h dot e e equation is available to us anyway. So, this equation is uh, there with us. So, this equation I will put it back actually. So, this uh, this altitude uh, dot h dot is available okay. And then rest of the things are like that. So I can solve for theta from this equation, and once I solve for theta from this from this equation, I'll get something something like a theta star command. Whatever solution is there, that that is that is interpreted as a command for the inner loop actually. So once theta star command is available, okay, so that uh, then I'll uh, go for a generation of a q star command from theta star because theta star theta dot doesn't contain uh, control either basically. So, I will go with the same uh, same idea that I will define an error quantity theta hat equal theta minus theta star and then aim for something like aerodynamics like that first order aerodynamics. So, theta dot is again available to us that is that is theta dot expression. So, once I put it back uh, then I will solve for q assuming that all other variables are available and whatever solution comes out that becomes my q star variable q star value actually. So, that becomes the command variable for the innermost loop. So, what happens here? Now, p star command is anyway available. Now, an equivalent q star command is also available. Then, a y should go to a y star uh, which is 0 anyway. And so, that that part is uh, is kept here because a y dot already contains the control actually. So, the, now I am ready to apply my innermost uh, control execution. So, I will define this uh, this x t tracking uh, tracking states and all that as uh, something like p q and a y and then error in that is p hat q hat and a y hat. So, these are by definition like that slow variable is like that. So, now I will apply the, the aerodynamic control principle. So, I will uh, I will define this x t hat as uh, as these variables anyway and then I will apply this first order aerodynamics for this x t hat actually and simultaneously I will also try to assure that the velocity control is also there uh, like the longitudinal way. So, we will do that and then uh, then come up with this uh, this control I mean the control computation that way where the first part is actually aerodynamic control, second part is first control. And again I repeat the thrust control will be updated in a, in a slower slow manner where the aerodynamic control will be updated in a fast manner actually. And as I told you in the beginning there, there, is, some, there is some idea of combined longitudinal and, uh, and lateral maneuver also. In that sense what you are doing is uh, many times the roll rate command given to high performance aircraft that is fighter aircrafts and all are typically not body roll rate. They are given in terms of velocity vector roll rate actually. And velocity vector, as you know, can be different from body x, y, z. I mean, uh, the, it need not be aligned with any any of the x, y, z of the body axis frame. 
why it is done because the rolling maneuver becomes very fast uh, around velocity vector roll. So, you can take quick maneuvers and all that actually. So, if but if you do that it excites both longitudinal and lateral maneuver together sort of thing. Okay. So, that, that how do you do that and again that is not uh, very dif very different because if you see this uh, something like uh, this uh, p w dot sort of thing that is a function of p that is a function of p anyway. So, what you do is uh, you assure that uh, that p w expression wherever p w expression is there you solve for p and then get some sort of a expression for uh, for uh, equivalent p and all that actually okay so that is uh, that's the that's the um, i mean i'll not take you through the through the very uh, detailed sort of thing and then it is available to you in the in the paper actually anyway so exactly similar way you assure that uh, first uh, first things uh, like once you have a equivalent p star then it is it is as good as a lateral uh, i mean maneuvers uh, sort of uh, idea there. So, you go through the same thing and then synthesize the control. Some other point of time then uh, see this uh, lateral maneuver is also like a little bit uh, funny situation many times uh, sometimes the p star command is directly given to get a quicker roll sort of thing. So, that you get out of the way and then or combat superiority and things like that, but sometimes when you are doing nice uh, flight for long duration and things like that it is not a good idea to control through p star. So, what you really want to do is the straighten level flight sort of thing where wings are uh, typically level and if you would want to do that uh, then uh, the p star command is not a good command. So, what you really need to give is phi star command and phi star is typically 0 for longitudinal case for lateral case also like uh, if you know what is your desired phi uh, uh, bank angle and all that you can give that is phi star actually. So, in those situations and the typically this is what is required for commercial aircrafts also because it the commercial aircrafts are never controlled through direct p star command sort of thing they are only controlled through a nice attitude uh, hold command and all that. But if you want to do that then uh, phi, phi should go to phi star then what happens is you, you define an error between that. So, phi minus phi star is the error between that and again enforce some sort of a aerodynamics but the problem is this is not directly a function of control variable. But also remember phi dot is, is primarily a function of p. So, you have to all uh, note in the in, in the I mean you have to remember those actually like which is uh, which uh, I mean time rate of change of uh, some variable is a primary function of some other variable and that is uh, that is what you should solve for actually in the outer loop. So, phi dot is a primary function of p. So, I, I want to solve for p from this equation and whatever p comes out I will interpret that is p star command actually. So, that then I my p star command is available. So, with all that uh, then I will proceed further with whatever p star I, I already have actually. So, with all that we have experimented some of these uh, results and all. So, you can see that uh, the results have also been compared with that earlier other existing idea that uh, that is available in the literature where this n z n y were converted it to equivalent uh, q and r and then experimented actually. So, we try to maintain as much uh, similarity as possible and uh, when you compare two methods you have to be slightly careful also that you do not give uh, emphasis to one over the other uh, either uh, I mean wanted or unwanted manner either way. So, we try to be as fair as, as much fair as possible and then uh, try to do some, some sort of experiments here actually. So, if you see that the existing method what it turns out is that uh, some, sometimes around like 60 seconds and things like that. So, okay, the command part of it first of all it is given something like a positive 2 g plus 2 g command for some time then it is a negative uh, like uh, uh, command for some time actually I mean uh, and then again it is like uh, 1 g command for some time ok. So, the, these are all some of things uh, that you can experiment plus minus plus sort of thing. So, to make sure that uh, tracking happens every time actually. So, what if you see closely then uh, what it turns out here is uh, first of all this uh, thrust control is getting saturated uh, very quick this is the saturation level you put something like 5 percent of maximum thrust uh, and below that you do not want to go because uh, once you shut off the engine it may be difficult to restart the engine during flight actually. So, you want to maintain some sort of the thrust level all the time. So, that 5 percent of the available thrust is, uh, is the minimum limit sort of thing. But, uh, if you see that this existing approach uh, goes towards uh, saturation value and after it hits saturation the velocity tracking is not good anyway. Okay. So, that will depart from what you want actually really. and all these experiments also remember it has to be done through some sort of uh, I mean these are all numerical studies where things partly uh, some information available partly not and all that. 
So, you have to make sure that you start with something like a trim condition, straightened level flight actually. So, getting that trim condition itself is an exercise and uh, that, uh, that is there in the paper, but I am not uh, telling you through that. You have to make sure that the aircraft keeps on flying at uh, some, uh, some straightened level trim condition actually. After that, you initiate these, uh, these experiments actually. So, that is the first observation. Second big uh, observation is like if you see this plot slightly close, I mean closely, we, I do not think this is very clear here, but uh, if, you, if you see that very clearly, then what happens is, uh, I mean very closely, then uh, the new approach, so there is nothing like if the command is given to positive side, then the development also happens towards positive side only. There is uh, what the other one, first it uh, dips actually, that means it goes in the reverse direction and then it comes out actually. Okay. And that is typically expected in some sort of, uh, I mean, whenever you are talking about the tail control aircrafts and all that, we all know that it is it is supposed to behave in a non-minimum phase be behavior manner actually. And mathematically speaking, very strictly speaking, the second method that we are proposing also has that, but it is so less that it, it is just almost uh, as if it is not there actually, okay, so that way. So, the non-minimum phase behavior is, uh, is quite minimum over here actually. And same thing you can also see in, in the Q response basically, uh, that is one, one method goes one side and the other one first go to the other side and then comes out actually. Okay, and the similar thing you see in the, in the alpha also basically there. And because of the, the saturation problem that we discussed here, all other things will go very bad actually. After, after one control goes to saturation, it is no more a control variable, it just becomes a some sort of a parameter actually. So, that control action will not be activated at all actually. Similarly, if you see control variable and all that, these are these are okay well within the bounds and all that because see the you have to also see how much control action is necessary to generate those 2G values, 3G values like that actually. And uh, so, you can see that uh, the control reflections are all within limits like 2 degree, 5 degree like that actually. So, that is not a very big problem per se actually. Okay. So, all these, uh, all these uh, plots are available in the, in the paper also that you can see what variable like uh, PQR, how they behave and then, uh, then alpha, beta, these are also important quantities, how they behave and things like that. In both the approaches by the way, this uh, beta remains very close to 0 anyway and that is one of the requirements for turn coordination actually. Okay. And uh, the new approach beta will remain even more tighter to 0, I mean close to 0 basically. But that's the that is a point to observe, but it is not a very major point you are claiming because the other approach also does not give a very high value of it either basically. Okay, so, that way. so, you can see some of these uh, combined longitudinal lateral maneuver that is something that we cannot compare. Okay, okay, so, this is actually, okay, I forgot to tell, this, these values what I told here is for the longitudinal maneuver. Okay, these these are the associated control with that and all that. For what you are talking here is lateral uh, maneuver where P star is given as a command. So, command value is directly given in terms of P, first minus 10 degree per second, then 10 plus 10 degree per second, then then 0. Initially, it was 0 anyway actually. So, with that your primary action is uh, L run and uh, end rudder and elevator reflection is, is minimal actually. Okay. And here it is the primary action is, uh, I mean longitudinal maneuver, primary action is elevator where the L run and end rudder is close to 0 actually that way. Anyway, so aerodynamic variable, control variables also are there and then uh, the we are also experimented as I told with respect to combined longitudinal and lateral maneuver case. So, that, that details are also available in the paper actually. So, my, the point here is uh, all control actions will be activated so that it actually the, uh, the objective is, is met. Remember this P w is the velocity vector role, how you can see the how, how it, how I mean uh, how good it goes there and then uh, tracks the commanded variables itself. So, that is nice to see that actually. Okay. And N y also if you see it is very close to 0, so that means you have a, a no matter, even if you have a combined longitudinal lateral maneuver, your turn coordination is always assured actually, which is again a nice thing to see. And any velocity, the initial velocity vector, velocity value, which is trim velocity is 580 feet per second, uh, that is what uh, we want to maintain and uh, it is maintained actually. Okay, that is another point that I want to tell here. This is the model that is available for F 16 that is openly available uh, is all in the in terms of FPS unit actually. So, somebody has to be careful to either uh, deal uh, with that FPS unit throughout or you have to convert to SI units and then, then work on that actually. So, then everything has to be converted to F 1 uh, unified framework first actually. That way. 
So, what is the summary of this control design which I call as nominal control design because we are still not talking about any adaptive control inaccuracy in the model and things like that actually. So, first thing is there is that existing method again that that is I am not talking anything on the any details on that uh, somebody can find that literature as well. Such as a 1994 if I remember it was published as a AWA conference paper actually. Uh, that the reference detail details can be found from our paper actually that is there anyway. Summary of that method is, uh, is also available as appendix of one of our papers anyway. So, that uh, the list of papers I will I will put it at the end of this lecture. Now, existing method if you see assumptions that they have done or what is required is that uh, v dot w dot has to be 0 and this uh, after you convert it to this attitude values and all they double derivative to the, the commanded I mean double derivatives of the commanded values of this phi theta size should also go to 0 I mean remain 0 actually that is an assumption. And if you see the new method the assumption is only that you require is v double dot w double dot become 0. So, this is actually one order improvement over v dot w dot being 0 ok. So, this is uh, I mean if you see this assumption to this assumption this is uh, one order uh, close to reality basically ok. So, that is that is how it is and this assumption is also not required here. And here we talk about more number of design parameters. So, if you talk longitudinal you require something like 11 parameters to tune, laterally you require some 12 parameters to tune, but here it is lesser number of design parameters so longitudinal 5 and lateral 7. Remember the lesser number of design parameters is also a good thing for the for control designer because he does not have to keep on wasting his time tuning these uh, these values uh, to a to get a good performance actually. And the point here is this method works. I mean certainly it, it works, we are not, it not claiming anything beyond that, but what you are claiming in the new method is it certainly works better actually. That means, uh, if you do this, uh, if you propose your new ideas and things like that and compare it in a fair manner, you can, uh, it is very uh, good to see some of those that uh, the, it leads to something like less control magnitude, it uh, leads to smoother transient response, there is no non-minimum phase behavior sort of thing, leads to better turn coordination that, uh, that means beta remains very close to 0. And uh, probably that uh, like uh, design parameters being less and all that is also a boon actually. So, this with this, uh, this new method seems to be very promising. But whenever this, uh, I mean uh, after uh, getting all those results, we also were curious to see the robustness part of it. So, when you do, then we wanted to experiment this, uh, this neuro adaptive control design for, for increasing the robustness part of it actually. So, objective here is to increase the robustness of the nominal control with respect to the parameter and or our model modeling inaccuracies. Primarily we are interested in parameter inaccuracy here. So, what is the issue here? Issue here is that the numbers that are typically given to us, I mean the, the fun, this uh, coefficients of the polynomial that is fitted and all that uh, are typically coming from internal experiments and things like that. So, with the, the numbers that comes out uh, from CFD study or internally something like this let us say ok. And then the, your actual number may be somewhere like that, this value is part of around that and this value is part of that. So, whatever slope that you are interpreting here the, this point to that point is actually not a good slope, what should be is that slope actually and that is a that is a quite a bit of dif I mean difference and that may lead to a lot of problems there actually ok because that because slopes are uh, cr crucial in computing the derivative actually like uh, let us say del C m by del delta that means C m delta probably if that is inaccurate then the delta value that you will compute is a anyway inaccurate. So, that will lead to lot of uh, difficulties and all that actually. So, what is uh, uh, I mean uh, what is going on here we just uh, gave some pilot commands like that and then we impose some sort of a limits on this uh, steady state error as performance evaluation actually. That means, if you give this, uh, this uh, error, I mean you remember this uh, what exercise is, you go back to this uh, model let us say, see, these models are there with us. So, if you see these models and then pick up one of that and all that and then there will be lot of coefficients with that and then you assume that the coefficient values are. Uh, wrong that means 5 10 percent error whatever you are putting there. You uh, it, as far as control design is concerned you take the nominal values, but as far as state simulation is concerned you say you feed a, a different value which is erroneous actually. And with respect to that you see the performance and with that performance you put this, uh, this uh, I mean performance bounds and all that uh, to, uh, to tell that ok if this performance bounds are met then I will assume that it is a success, if it is not met in the steady state then I will assume that it is a failure actually. 
then the pilot commands are also put something like that and limit imposed on the steady state error in the lateral mode or something like this. So, altitude should be plus or minus 1 percent, n y should be plus or minus 0 0.05 g, v t is plus or minus 1 percent, phi is plus or minus 10 percent etc. So, with that you see this, uh, this some of these uh, I mean uh, surprising or rather well you can tell it is expected also sometimes. So, you see that uh, this is a typical response where the, if you take uh, nominal parameter values it appears everything remains good, but if you the moment you put this uh, this inaccurate parameter values and then simulate it obviously, your the control that you are computing is not able to enforce the aerodynamics that you want to enforce and hence nothing is going good uh, that means, the tracking is it bad and after some time it actually goes unstable. So, that means, it is actually certainly a failure case actually. Okay, and if you see that why it happens, then actually thrust goes increase increases, it goes to the 100 percent of that and that is actually upper bound of the saturation, then it comes back and it saturates in the lower bound anyway. So, these are all uh, reasons that why it uh, actually happens that way. And similarly, if you see uh, the, the lateral maneuver case, uh, this is also like uh, not good because N y which is should remain 0, it starts developing uh, I mean non 0 and starts going diverge, I mean it is it's, it's diverging actually. Similarly, V t also start diverging all, all those tissues were not uh, not good to see actually. So, this is uh, this is the failure case uh, why it happens and things like that. Remember, there is nothing like a saturation value here, they are uh, still within that and then uh, about the, the deflection demands are so high here, they may be very unrealistic and things like that actually. Or that, that is a part you can see that uh, this values I mean the, if this happens then we certainly consider that as a failure case actually. So, with that uh, there are lot of rigorous I mean lot of simulation studies uh, that you do like let us say aerodynamic coefficients uh, and uh, mass of inertia mass and inertia coefficient. You combine them in a different percentage sense you put of them and then 1 percent, 5 percent, 1 percent, 10 percent, 2 percent, 5 percent like that actually and each of those combinations you run something like uh, 50 to 100 cases actually and then count for how many number of cases you have success, how many failures and all that. And it turns out that okay, if it is 1 percent, 5 percent, 1 percent, 10 percent nothing to worry so much actually, but the moment this aerodynamic coefficient start becoming more and more inaccurate there, there is a loss of robustness actually. And if it is uh, 5 percent and 10 percent that combination which is not very unrealistic by the way, the, the success is uh, almost like uh, let us say you can say 3 fourth actually. So, 1 fourth cases you will certainly get failure sort of thing. So, that is not a good thing to observe. Similar things happens for, for lateral mode also. So, then we thought okay, we will go back and experiment this, this neuro adaptive design to increase this robustness and can we really address this issue. So, then in that setting as I told in the previous class, we, we have experimented in the, uh, in the output setting only that means, uh, whatever this p dot q dot r dot those uh, equations, that equation needs to be robust actually that is the innermost loop needs to be robust that is all we are enforcing not the total straight uh, state tracking and all that actually. So, then y should go to y z as soon as possible, then y a should be y a dot is defined as something like a auxiliary dynamics and all that, then y should go to y d, but we will take it through y should go to y a and then y a should go to y d all that actually though that kind of uh, two loop sort of situation it is not really two loop it is just uh, like interpreting both the things in a different setting both the things are happening together anyway actually. So, so, for steps for assuring y a to y d we have studied that it is done in a dynamic inversion setting. So, you solve it solve it and then because it is control fine and the number of input outputs are equal to number of inputs the square system I will be able to solve for the control variable directly actually that is the point here. And then if you see this y 2 should go to y a then you define an error for that and then the, the neural network is for every channel that means, we have three channels anyway p or p q r. So, uh, you, you well, it is not really P Q R here. It is actually the Y that we are talking actually in in terms of uh, dynamic equations for lateral and function. I'll show you that. Uh, show you that actually. Okay, and you have four uh, four variables in fact, not three, and four control variables also. So that way, this is still square system anyway. Uh, you, you do that actually. Okay, so the ideal network is neural network is given by that. Uh, the error quantity is that. So output dynamics is defined like that. All the details we discussed in the last class. Then E I e I dot the error dynamics is given like that. So, take a Lyapunov no function that way, take its time derivative, do the algebra, the coefficients is appearing with respect to W tilde uh, I mean uh, W tilde transpose. So, you take uh, the coefficient make sure it is 0. So, that gives you some sort of a weight update rule actually. 
So, this leads to the condition that Li dot is something like that which is negative provided uh, this uh, this happens all the details we discuss again in the last class itself. So, we are assuming that this is it actually what you are uh, what you are claiming is it leads to practical stability and in the process it increases robustness actually. So, and this is what I was talking here the output vector for the longitudinal mode is like that P A Z A by V T and output vector for the lateral mode is P Q A by V T. So, instead of A Z we have Q actually. So, this is the innermost loop that you are bothered about actually. So, that is where you will uh, compute the control action directly after by enforcing first order dynamics. Basis function selection becomes an issue we selected a Gaussian basis function uh, and the linear in the weight network and for uh, for each of the basis function we selected uh, three um, I mean Gaussian functions uh, Gaussian basis functions actually. And then uh, you varied this uh, the sigma values like one thing is 0 0.1, 10 sort of thing for each of the selection that means for each of the channel we are actually talking about 9 basis functions uh, and then for, for each of the 9 basis functions we have to we should have a weight actually. And so, that, that weight uh, dot I mean the weight of that rule should be integrated in, in parallel actually right so this weight of that rule should, should be integrated in parallel. So, in this some of the design tuning parameters have been selected something like this ok. So, then constants values these are all like uh, once you start uh, doing some experiment you, I mean you start with some value and then keep varying and uh, until you get that. But once you finalize some design after that you do not have to vary. In other words, uh, if you select these variables uh, one last time, then from then on, there onwards, now it, it should not be varied from case to case actually. So, if you think that this is, these are the values that uh, you have tuned to the best, best manner sort of thing. So, just keep it as it is. And then to then take random cases, uh, that means uh, you select some sort of a like a random coefficient number and all that within the domain that you discuss actually, and uh, uh, then carry out the simulation studies anyway. Also, again I repeat this p values if you see are uh, smaller lot smaller than this gamma values ok. So, that means, the, the error minimization that we are talking here ok this Lyapunov function this component is uh, weighed more compared to that component actually okay, that is the meaning there. Anyway, so, the constant values are selected like that and again you can see that the same case uh, so, I mean some of the cases that were leading to failure. Now, you can see how good it is. Uh, to, to see this response. In other words, whatever was happening here, it was going unstable and going way beyond the desired values and all that. That is not happening anymore. We are uh, we are able to very tightly uh, kind of track these commanded values. As I mean, in other words, the response that comes out from here, this uh, with the adaptive control is as if there is no parameter in accuracy basically. Okay. So, that is how we can interpret uh, that way that means, uh, we can see that uh, the values that are I mean the, the error th that is I mean the that uh, error between the tracking command and the uh, I mean the uh, actual response are there, but that is uh, as good as the nominal controller actually nominal control will have some transient. So, this control will also have its transient, but the error between the nominal response to actual response is quite small actually that is the that is the point here. So, you actually like uh, you see that as if nothing has happened as far as uh, like my, uh, my actual system is concerned it is behaving as if it is a nominal system dynamics actually. So, same thing happens here same thing for the control I mean the velocity thing as well and then uh, you can see that whatever it was leading to on the instability I mean the saturation and things like that very quickly it is no more saturated it is all within the bound that we are discussing actually. I mean, you took it in the that bound values for the thrust was uh, either it should be bounded below is 5 percent or bounded above is 100 percent that is what uh, we have taken. And within that this command values that we are given it uh, you can see that is uh, all operating within that. Also see that nominal controller whatever is here then the control values and they have to be different because this control uh, so that solid line actually is, is for the actual plant, uh, this control is for the nominal plant. So, obviously, they have to be different. So, that is the way you are enforcing. So, the control values are or control histories are different. So, the control is modified in such a way that the response is not modified, response is enforced to be similar to nominal system that is that's the whole core point actually. Okay. So, similarly, you see that it the, the lateral mode uh, commands also like whatever was not good to see before is now very good to see because you cannot you will not be able to see any different difference at all actually. And whatever was going away and away, it is is no more going away. It, that NY 
is maintained at 0 and uh, in the turn coordination is also assured actually. So, these are some of the observations that you uh, have to have. Controls in the lateral mode as uh, you can see these control values do get modified, so that the, the, rest, the performance values do not get modified. I mean, the, that is the key point again here actually. So, you can see that uh, nominal response whatever is there, actual control is actually not uh, doing a good job that means nominal control again I, I repeat uh, like last class so the, what you mean by actual control or something like that is, is like this. Either you have a nominal plant and associated with that there is a nominal controller, so those combinations are good anyway. But you have another case where you just want to retain the nominal controller formula but you want to execute that based on the actual state information. So, that way the, the formula whatever the control action is getting into the system is actually operating in a in a feedback manner actually and all these exercises are based on that. And if you really make your uh, ud as a function of xd that means that the nominal control uh, is computed from nominal state dynamics and then you simply apply it here then it becomes an open loop control and the performance behavior is, is extremely bad if you if you want to do that actually. And that, that we have done it and you have just seen it for some sort of a curiosity actually. So, okay, so, that means the feedback action itself has a, has a meaning that that has a, that gives you certain degree of uh, robustness, but once you have this adaptive can, uh, action and you exactly enforce what you want to do then there can be substantial amount of robustness increase actually. So, the same exercise that you have done before we will go back again and try to do that repeat that exercise you define your performance uh, conditions where it is acceptable not acceptable and things like that. And again all that you have done this uh, this uh, uh, kind of Monte Carlo study is primarily because this uh, this robustness uh, concepts are uh, in the norm setting or in the let us say in the margin settings and things like that they are available only for I mean uh, linear systems actually. And because uh, we do not want to extrapolate that too much on that we, so we just want to define this some sort of a Monte Carlo simulation that means large number of random studies actually and then see what is going on there in the, in the non-linear setting directly basically. But one can always go back and try to linearize and then talk about some sort of a uh, like um, gain margin, phase margin for single input, single output setting all sort of analysis one can always do. And there are a lot of exercise, a lot of research going on these days to propose good robustness measures for nonlinear systems also, but we will uh, we have not done any of those in this, this particular exercise. What you are doing here is uh, just like random Monte Carlo simulation. You, to view, you take this various, um, I mean, I mean, if you see this various uh, combinations of these perturbations, and each of the combination you try to excite something like uh, 50 random cases, and then see how much, how many successes is there, how many failures are there. So first is this aerodynamic coefficient perturbation 1 percent, inertia parameter is 5 percent. So 1 percent, 5 percent combination and 1 percent, 10 percent combination, 2 percent, 5 percent, 2 percent, 10 percent, 5 percent, 5 percent like that actually you do and you can keep doing actually that way. So, what it happens is uh, you can see that as long I mean as soon as this uh, aerodynamic perturbation becomes 10 percent, there is actually like a lot of loss of robustness as far as nominal control success is concerned. So, you can see that is already if it is 10, 10 percent here, 10 percent there the only success is about 40 percent and if you take it to 20 percent here the success rate is almost close to 0. I mean very rarely it will succeed otherwise it is a very large number of failures will happen actually. And 20 percent inaccuracy is not a very unrealistic inaccuracy rather I mean that is that is there I mean no matter what you want to do. But if you see this success rate of the adaptive control for the same cases you can see that uh, you see the last number it, uh, it is all 100 percent actually that means we have, uh, we have never observed one single case with respect to the, the performance condition that we have specified. Uh, we have never seen a single case which will, which will fail actually. Okay, so, that is just the observation there. That is what will happen in longitudinal mode. Again lateral mode is, uh, is also similar. If you take this uh, let us say towards the end of this table if you say 5 percent, 10 percent, 10 percent, 5 percent, 10 percent, 10 percent the nominal success uh, quickly degrades actually. Is, and it is actually quite sensitive to aerodynamic uh, coefficient perturbation which is logical also. So, the moment it is a 10 percent there, the, the loss of robustness is quite high, but if you want to put adaptive control back into picture, then the robustness is very high actually. So, it uh, I mean we again we observe no case where the adaptive control will, will lead to a failure actually. Having said that also remember that we have all assumed uh, that ideal state information, ideal error information and things like that. And those are no, also not realistic in, in a way. So, we have to also make I mean if somebody wants to do further experiments and all you can have to you have to see like some sort of a 
filter in the loop or something like estimated state in the loop, how does it behave and things like that. So, that exercise is not done. We all assume that the actual state is information is available, desired state is available. So, the EA information which is critical for Lyapunov weight training and things like that, that is available in a precise manner which may or may not happen in reality, just, just a matter of caution actually. Okay. But nevertheless, so that issue is there any control design, any state feedback control design. So, without that issue, if you, if you want to see this itself gives you, a, gives you some sort of an idea that okay, if, I, if I put adaptive control back uh, in, into picture, then the success rate can be very, very high, okay, that is that's the point actually. So, a summary of this entire lecture is something like this, uh, nominal control design has been carried out using dynamic inversion for this uh, this flight control problem and also remember that throughout this design and simulation we have used the actual nonlinear 6 degree of freedom uh, model that is available we have never done any any uh, i mean approximations like linearization so, or anything like that actually okay so that uh, this new method shows remarkably improvement in performance as compared to the other dynamic inversion based method that we discovered and we uh, i have not given any details on that okay so so, what I claiming is nominal control design has been carried out using dynamic inversion. The method that we are compared, uh, we have compared our nominal control results are also that that method is also based on dynamic inversion, but the approach is different. I mean, so that means even the tool is same, you have to also see that what problem you are trying to solve and with respect to that problem, what is a good thing to do. I mean, that has to be well thought about actually. Otherwise, uh, just because you are applying the same method does not mean you, you get the same results actually. Okay. So, first claim is uh, the new method that you are proposing for nominal control design is actually it leads to remarkable improvement in performance uh, uh, over the existing approach uh, that is available in the literature actually. And also remember the same thing that we have also experimented with the very uh, I mean kind of a uh, whatever little information model is available in the Roscom flight dynamics book for, uh, Boeing, for Boeing 747 aircraft that is also that was actually our starting point of the experiment of all these uh, things. I have not taken you through that anyway, but I will give a reference at that. Okay, so, that is uh, the, so that the same design has also been experimented with same results uh, that you saw uh, with respect to nominal control design and so similar advantages has been obtained for the, for the uh, commercial aircrafts as well actually. Okay. But uh, I mean this uh, entire approach and all makes more meaningful in the in the fighter aircraft and the high performance aircraft sense where the command values can be given in terms of NZ and Y all that actually. Okay. Anyway, so second thing that you are claiming is the nominal design has been augmented with neuroadaptive design for improvement in robustness and the result shows that the tracking performance remains very good and there is substantial enhancement of robustness actually that is what the, the claim robustness becomes quite high and that is there in pre evident from this table. The, the, both the tables, so the last uh, row if you see everywhere it is 100 percent, uh, nowhere uh, we have observed one case it will go to like a failure case and all that. So, uh, uh, like references, the, as I told the entire lecture is borrowed from this particular uh, reference, uh, you can see this uh, for more details, the first one which is again it is published very recently like uh, May 2010. And this is also a good thing is uh, this uh, journal is actually a web journal and anybody can register there uh, and then download this paper, uh, I mean as of now it is free actually. So, that is uh, that is an advantage, anybody can download and then you can see more details. You can see the references there in, uh, in that paper that you have given some several references, you can see more details on that actually. Prior to that you have published that in uh, some couple of uh, conferences as well, part, part of the stories and all that. But I, everything has been combined to one piece uh, here anyway. So, the only thing is that nominal control design uh, the, that, that the comparison study has been carried out is, is uh, even a summary is probably not included here. But if you want to see that then probably either you pick up that reference and see the details or you see the, the, the other paper which is uh, appeared here like a AIAA conference in 2003 where some, some summary of that approach is given as an appendix anyway. So, that is somebody can see that also actually. And adaptive control approach as I discussed in the previous lecture is borrowed from this literature which is also not very old, this is uh, uh, this journal publication is from 2007 actually. So, uh, the method part if somebody wants to see more detail can we, I mean can see details on this. The comparison part for the commercial aircraft has been done here, so that also somebody can see. 
the reference I mean the reference from which we borrowed for comparison sake the other approach and all that is also uh, available here as a summary and uh, the entire lecture for this particular lecture I have taken from this one which is again it uh, is a free journal as of now you have to register and, uh, and download from there actually. All right with that I will stop this lecture. Thank you.